Do you need to allow your players to see where they're going to throw some object, such as a grenade, shoot a cannonball, lob a banana, any of these things? This is the right video for you. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. In this video, we're going to revisit some topics that maybe we didn't pay too much attention to in high school physics, and that's how do we calculate where something will go based on its mass and its initial velocity. When we throw a grenade, which is what we're going to do in this video, the math for it is relatively straightforward. We take that initial velocity of how hard we throw the grenade, considering how heavy it is with the force that we apply to it, and from there we can calculate exactly where it's going to go. Let's hop right into it today. If we open up the Unity editor, we'll see that I'm using the starter assets, the third person character controller, to get the scene and this robot. I can move around by moving the mouse and use WASD to run around. I've added a small change here to allow me to right click to aim where I'm looking, and if I left click while I'm right clicking, I can throw a grenade. The problem is, it's kind of hard to aim this grenade. I can't really tell where it's going to go very well. That leaves me guessing and checking about maybe this grenade will make it over here, maybe this one will land there, maybe I'll overshoot. It's really hard to tell. It'd be really convenient to be able to see where am I going to throw this grenade. How the grenade's configured is it's a child of the right hand. It has a rigid body with some mass as well as a sphere collider with a material so it's a little bit bouncy and a Cinemachine impulse source just so that way we get that feedback whenever it explodes it's gonna trigger this thing to kind of make the camera shake. I don't want to get too much into the mechanics of how to throw the grenade you can check out the repository to see how that's set up and you may already have your own system for controlling this kind of thing. What we want to focus on in this video now is showing where is that gonna go using some math and a line renderer. So let's open up Visual Studio and check out the only script that we have, the Grenade Thrower. Underneath the Scene References header, we're going to add two serialized fields, a private line renderer, line renderer, and a transform release position. For me, I'm going to make them be the same object. You could just use the line render instead of release position if you really wanted to. I'm going to add a new header called display controls, where we're going to configure how this line render is going to display stuff. It'll be a serialized field, a range from 10 to 100, a private int line points, and I'm going to set that to be 25 by default. That's going to be the target number of points, assuming that we used a time between points as one. So this number is going to expand because the next field, serialized field, range from 0.01f to 0.25f, private float time between points, I'm going to set to be 0.1 by default, which would give me 250 points on my line. We'll get into how that math works out in just a little bit. Don't worry too much about it right now. The important thing is the lower time between points, the more curved your line will appear. And the fewer you put, the more jagged it's going to look. In the update loop, I'm going to just call a new function called draw projection immediately after I've set the animator transform rotation to look in the direction that the camera is looking. We'll define that function as a private void draw projection right here below the update loop. And this is where we're going to do all of the magic about making this line render show us where we're going to be trying to throw this grenade. The first thing I'll do is set the line render enabled to be true. I'm going to set the line render position count to be mathf.seal to int line points divided by the time between points plus one. We'll define a vector three start position to be the release position dot position and a vector three start velocity to be the throw strength times the camera dot transform dot forward divided by the grenade dot mass. Us dividing by the grenade mass is really important because the throw strength is effectively the initial velocity that we're going to use. We're just using the camera dot transform dot forward to set it in the direction that the camera is currently facing. And we need to divide by the grenade dot mass to give us the accurate force of what we're actually going to be throwing. We'll define an int i equals zero and do line render dot set position i. So the first position to be the start position, which is again that release position. And then we're going to do for float time equals zero time less than the number of line points and time plus equal time between points. This is a little bit strange, you might think. So the time between points is defining basically how many steps we're going to take. And by having it a low number, like we have 0.1 here, that means we're going to go about every tenth of a second, we're going to define a new point. And since we're going to have effectively 10 times as many points as the number of line points we anticipated, that's why we needed to set the number of line render position counts to be line points divided by the time between points, which will give us 250 by default. We'll increment i by 1 because we just used that first i of 0. We'll do vector 3 point equals start position plus the time times the start velocity. That's going to move us along the x and the z in the direction we want it to go. And we're going to offset the y using our favorite kinematic equation of velocity times time 
plus one half times acceleration times time squared. This is probably the first kinematic equation anybody got introduced to in school. Simply defines to us the displacement of some object over time. We're using gravity as the acceleration. So what we're gonna do is the new point dot y is gonna be the start position dot y because that's our starting point. And we're gonna add the starting velocity y times the time, that's our vi times t, plus one half, that's physics dot gravity dot y divided by two, that's half times our acceleration, multiplied by time, multiplied by time. Then we're gonna set the line render position at i, so the next point, to be whatever vector three point we just calculated. Then we're gonna loop over however many times between time equals zero and time equals line points to give us the entire trajectory of this object. That's all that we need to do to at least get the line render moving. You'll see some problems in that when we get to the demo, but first in the update, we're gonna check else if the application is not focused or the right button is not pressed, we're gonna set the line render enabled to be false because we're not aimed up to kind of throw the grenade yet. Now let's hop over to the Uni editor and see how does this look. I'm gonna drag the release position to the release position and to the line render because my release position has a line render on it already. I've positioned the release position exactly where the robot's hand is when it releases the grenade in the animation. This is important for our calculation since we need to know exactly where in space we are to start calculating the path that that grenade is going to take. It does not have to be the same transform as the line render. The line render coordinates are all in world space. The configuration of this isn't particularly important, it just has a material and a relatively thin width. We're controlling all the important pieces of the line render in this grenade thrower script. So let's click play. And you'll see as I right click, this line render is showing me where the grenade's gonna go and it looks really accurate. The grenade landed exactly where the line render ended into that wall. Problem you'll see is the line render doesn't actually end when it hits a wall. So I can see that it's going through this wall, through the door frame, through another wall, through the floor, and then goes really, 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 really far down. That's not what we're looking for here. Ideally, what we want to happen is for it to stop the line render and stop computing all these extra points that have no value added because I'm only showing to the first impact. That's all the help that I want to give to the player. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I am so grateful for your support. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to join this cause, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, get your name up here on the screen, and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome tier supporters, I have Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Paul Berry, Matt Parkin, and Ivan. I'm so grateful for your support. Thank you. Let's open up Visual Studio again to see how can we prevent the line render going through objects. The first thing I'll do is create a private layer mask called Grenade Collision Mask. And this part, I'm going to be honest, is pretty weird. I wish that Unity had a better way to get the physics collider matrix from your project settings, but this is the best way I could find. We're going to go in awake and say int grenade layer equals grenade dot game object dot layer for int i equals zero, i less than 32, because that's the most number of physics layers we can have. I plus plus, check if not physics.get ignore layer collision, grenade layer passing an i. Then we're gonna do some magic here, grenade collision mask, or equals one bit shift left i. So what we're doing in the if is checking which collision layers are ignored for the grenade layer relative to layer i. I'm gonna go through all of the different ones that exist. This next line is a little bit magic to me, What I got it from the Unity documentation. What it does is adds to the layer mask if this layer does collide with the other layer. Once we know what the layer mask is for this grenade, that way we don't have to configure a layer mask on this script based on what layers we want the line to collide with. We're actually going to use the project configuration for the grenade and consider which layers it will realistically collide with and use that in this script. When we're drawing our projection, first thing we're going to do after we've set the line render position is do vector three last position equals line render dot get position i minus one. The first loop, we have two points. This is safe to always work. We'll check if physics dot raycast last position point minus last position normalized gives us the direction to this point. We'll do out raycast hit hit and then get the magnitude so that way we're only raycasting the distance between those two points with point minus last position dot magnitude and finally passing in that grenade collision mask. So if this returns true, that means we hit something. And if we hit something, then we want to do line render dot set position of the current point to be the hit point. And we're going to set the line render total position count to be I plus one. That way we don't have any extra of the old points to be considered anymore. And since 
i is an index, we need to include one more than the index since it's a zero based index. And then we'll return. That way we're not wasting any more time going through this loop when we've, we're done. We've found where we hit. If we open up the Unity editor one more time and I start looking around, you'll see that the line render stops as it makes contact with these walls. The grenade is just on the default layer here, so the default layer is colliding with everything. So as I move around, you'll see this line render just makes impact with the wall and stops rendering more. Because we're doing it based on a physics raycast, the last point is directly on the point where we made contact. So it looks really good. It's exactly where that point is. And you can see if I'm right clicking and I'm throwing these grenades around, they're going exactly where I'm predicting they're gonna go. Simple as that. What you learned in high school was not completely useless now it can help you make video games. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video, and if you did, go ahead and like and subscribe to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.